not Acts chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1, going to verse 6. You all want to stand with me for the reading of the Word of God? This very interesting. 
It's 10 verses here. I said 6, but shame on me. But God just doesn't put a bunch of words in the Bible for no reason. To fill up space. And we get a lot of information. But we don't get revelation. You know, and they and they call it the mysteries of the gospel. Was hidden for them. It's not hidden from us, it's hidden for us. But we have to go to searching sometimes. For this revelation knowledge, we can get a lot of information and we can just go speaking this out and speaking that out. But something very... When he starts it out, he says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. Yes. Now this is Peter and John. They have been with Jesus through His whole ministry. They have seen all the miracles performed at the hand of Jesus. If these guys knew about God, they did. But where were they going? To the temple. At the ninth hour of prayer. And this is early in the stage of the church growth. And the believers met there. But God tells us over in Hebrews 10. I'm going to read the 23rd through the 25th verse. Let us firmly hold the profession of our faith without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And I think God's got a little cowboy in him here. And let us consider how to spur one another to love and to do good works. Come on, copper bat and letter bug. Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but let us exhort one another, especially as you see the day approaching. He says, don't. I know some say Paul wrote this, but there's some argument about that, but whoever. But that's a command. He says, don't. Forsake the assembling. Together. A fellow believers exhorting one another. When there's a Valentine's Day party. When these doors swing open. We ought to be in the house. Isn't this what we want? To increase more and more. Us and our children. And we got to do what God says. And I'm talking that Peter and John were two mighty men of God that they'd seen it all. They'd worked miracles. They'd done. But they didn't forsake the assembly. If you look right ahead of chapter 3 there, these people got together in the house. They broke bread. They fellowshiped with one another. So if we want to increase more and more, we ought to do what the Word says. Amen? Amen. Yeah, in 2 Timothy 3, he says all words inspired for God. And it's profitable. Say profitable. profitable. That's increase, isn't it? Yes. And what about when we come and give our tithes and offerings? Psalms 119, 160 says the entirety of God's Word is truth. Yeah. 
Well, the Word says God loves a cheerful giver. When it comes to give our tithes and our offerings, we ought to be like this guy sitting at the gate begging, expecting a touch from God, expecting we ought to be bouncing up here and not being able to get it out of our pocket fast enough because we have tithers' rights. As tithers, we have a right. And God said He will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Right, Sister Danielle? I heard you say that earlier. This is established by two or three witnesses. Now what's devouring you? But God honors your time. Your time of coming here. Don't forsake that assembly. Or you hear me? Yeah. Now He, he honors that. Your time of being here, it's not about the money. He'll make you rich in things money can't buy. Hello? Yes. I started there, I said, in the beginning. Revelations 22.13 says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. The first, the last. Every Christian endeavor we start on ought to begin with the Word and end with the Word. And if we do that, then we're going to see the increase. We're going to see the increase of God. Because He watches after His Word to perform it. Come on, people, am I talking to somebody here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God.
this is so important, is people getting together. People in agreement. Speaking about His goodness. Giving glory to Him. With that beautiful game, I did a little, did a little, re, little research on it. Now this is the main drag into the temple. It was 62 feet wide, 31 feet high. And this is Herod's temple. This is not the, the glorious one that Solomon did, but the is surely a sight to behold, covered and polished Corinthians bronze. This is a magnificent place. Then he says, seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, he asked for alms. The title of this message is Expecting the Unexpected. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I heard Joyce Meyer say this the other day and it really resonated with my soul. That we have to do a lot of asking and not a whole lot of receiving. Got quiet, didn't it? We do a whole lot of asking and not a whole lot of receiving. And God, He wants it. We're His children. He wants every good thing for us. But we get content sometimes just getting by. You're not talking to anybody? Yes. Peter gazing at him with John said, look at us. So he paid attention to them expecting to receive something from them. Are you expecting to receive something today? Yes. But he said, seeing Peter and John, this beggar knew them. Remember I told you we get a whole lot of information and not a lot of revelation? Hebrews chapter 11. Is that any question? A great faith chapter in there. But we all know that this is the time of the triumphant entry. And in the 11th, Mark 11, 11, it says, Jesus entered Jerusalem and entered into the temple and when he had looked around at everything, as the hour was now late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Okay. At the beginning of Acts 3, they set this beggar daily at the gate. They went in. And they went out. He saw them. He knew these guys. Had been. Jesus and the twelve. He knew them. But this is the main drag. You know, and we see people on the street all the time panhandling and things. Aren't they expect they're expecting to receive something? 
Now, if we, have, we give something to them, we ought to tell them, the Lord put this on my heart to give it to you. These are opportunities that the Lord gives us. Now, this was a, the time of the Passover. That was the first day. Then comes the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This goes on for eight days. They're there at the Passover. They're there for eight days. That's nine. Eighteen times he has seen them go in and out of this temple. And he knew them, so obviously he'd receive something from them. Seeing Peter and John, he looked, expecting to receive something. Are you expecting to get something today? Now, Jesus was a Jew. Amen? Amen. Oh, it's this country western day that said they don't make Jews like Jesus anymore. <laughs> I want to stop them. Oh, it was good. But see, there was... We don't get revelation of all this because this guy has seen these guys and he's seen Jesus' ministry was three years. Jesus was a Jew. I made this point because there's three feasts that the Jewish people were required to attend. The Endeavoring, the Feast of Tabernacles, and Unleavened Bread. That was a requirement. Doesn't our word tell us that Jesus fulfilled all the law and the prophets? Had He not done this, then he wouldn't have been without sin. So Jesus had to, he had to do these things. But then that, our pastor doesn't just hand these handouts. Willing nilly. You know, I'm, if we studied on this message from Brother Prince, yeah. speak and receive God's supply in your life. Yeah. And how about, I like to add that, in the lives of others. The year of increase more and more. You and your children. Bless your children. But I, I saw something last night and, and I've read over this a lot of times. And on the next day when they had returned from Bethany, they're heading back to the temple again. Jesus, seen from a far fig tree with leaves, he went to see if perhaps he might find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing except leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Jesus said to it, May no one ever eat fruit of you again. And the disciples heard it. Well, they went out of the temple the night before. They're coming back. Now I'm pretty well assured they're staying at Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house. And we all know about Mar Martha griping about having to fix everybody something to eat. But it says here, Jesus was hungry.
Remember, if you look at that's a, the entirety of God's word is truth. In Mark chapter 9, when they went up on the mount, the transfiguration and stuff, and they came back down, and you're all familiar with this story, I believe, of the young man that had epileptic seizures and stuff, and the disciples couldn't cast the spirit out of this. Now Peter and James and John are with him when he comes back down, and they're seeing the melee that's going on and things in this guy's kid's father comes and says to him, if you can do anything for us, he asks him to do it. And so, Jesus rebuked the spirit and it throwed him into convulsions and they thought he was dead. I want you to remember this. Jesus reached out his hand and raised him up. But then the, afterwards, the disciples are talking to him. He says, why couldn't we cast that spirit out? He says, because these kind come out only by prayer and fasting. Now in chapter 11, Jesus has gone in on a mission now to clean, cleanse the temple. The, the temple. But he, was, he was hungry. He had obviously not ate that night, not ate breakfast. He had gotten a time of prayer and fasting and he was hungry. And he was about to, he's wanting to break his fast right now. And then we really shouldn't get all caught up in, for it was not the season of figs. Any time in that region of the country when there's leaves on that tree, it may not be the beginning of the season or the end of the season, but if there's leaves on that tree, there should be figs on it. So Jesus went right to the root of the problem there. And cursed it at the root. He talks, Brother Prince speaks about that several times in his letter there. We got to get to the root of the problem. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. But then we, this great faith chapter here. How, long, how many of you been dealing with a prolonged ailment? And stuff. Jesus gave us a demonstration of that faith. He gave the disciples a demonstration of that faith before he ever had the discourse that says, have faith in God. Or have the God kind of faith. And some of these sicknesses and illnesses have been hanging around a long time and have been plaguing you. And you've got to get to the root of the problem. But he tells us, he's, he says, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. Didn't we see that in the beginning? And God said, light be. And light was. <clears throat> the power of our words. We don't speak the symptoms, we speak the victory. Yeah. Every believer has a voice, yeah. and it's a voice of victory. Yeah. We're going from victory to victory. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And this is a victory that overcomes is our faith. Yeah. But he says... Speak to this mountain and do not doubt and tell it to be thrown into the sea. And whatever you say will come to pass. There's one believing in there. Say it. Say it. 
Say it. Then he says, Therefore, when you pray, where were Peter and John going? The hour of prayer. Prayer. All things by prayer and supplication. Make your requests known to God. He's hearing you. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And, I've, and this was in the, in the last message. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is heaven may also forgive your sins. But if you forgive, you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. There's nothing ambiguous about that, is there? Faith won't work. Prayer won't work. Nothing works. In an unforgiving heart. But this beggar, he was expecting to receive something. And then Peter said, I have no silver and gold. But I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter, right there, put a demand on the name. He did not demand Jesus. Jesus did not put that Lameness on that better. But he put a demand on the devil to get his hands off him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 says, God gave him the name and exalted him, the name that is above every name, in the heavens and the earth, and the earth below, and that every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Remember our thing three years ago? Greater works than these shall you do, John 14. And because I go to the Father, you shall do the works that I do, and greater works also. Jesus says, you ask me anything in my name, and I will do it. You fear God? In the book of James it says, even the devil, demons tremble. That the name and the power that we have that he has given us, the name of Jesus and the blood, We're heirs. Heirs. Oh my goodness. My goodness. And it says he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. speaking about getting aligned with God. I'm telling you, when Peter grabbed him, he told us in Mark 16, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Shall. We hear it over and over, strongest word in the English language, but the power of God went into this man and things got aligned. Pastor was talking about us getting aligned. 
And what better man than Peter for this? Peter had been through this. He's sinking when he's walking in the water. Jesus preached. Ooh, and he rose up. When he went into when they went into Jairus' house because his little daughter had died. Jesus got everybody out of there that wasn't a faith. And he reached out and grabbed her hand and said, Little girl, arise. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. We get a lot of information and not revelation, but when we start getting revelation off of this, Peter saw him with that child with the epilepsy, thought he was dead, reached and grabbed his hand and raised him up. See, when we go through these Gospels, Jesus is always demonstrating for us. He demonstrated of faith. And that's a, all matter. Mark chapter 11 is, is a demonstration of faith. A demonstration of faith. Yeah, he cursed that fig tree at the root, and they come back, and Peter said, This guy up from the root. Have faith in God. We have what we say. So, what are we saying? What did I just say? That I got that. This other thing from the doctor the other day. Well, I want to know. So, if I'm going to know, I've got it. Confront it. But then I give God the praise for it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Immediately, his feet and ankles were strengthened. Jumping up, he stood and walked and entered the temple with him, walking, jumping, and praising God. Boy, don't neglect that praise. After you, and, that, and I, I think John 5, 14, and this is a confidence we have that if we ask Him anything, we know that we have it. And if we know that we have it, we ought to start being thankful for it. Yeah. Right off the get. But this, is, this is not mental assessment. This is a faith. This is a heart condition. He said, if you believe in your heart and say to this mountain, be thou removed. Then you'll have what you say. But who God got the glory in this situation? God didn't get, there wasn't any glory in it for God for this guy bearing up all these years, being in this pitiful condition. Don't you know that this, and Pastor was talking about hope last week. Now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says he was expecting to receive alms. Well, this was just a natural human hope. This is not the God kind of hope that he spoke about in Romans 4 4. In Abraham, hope against hope. And I think we got in that too. And because of that, Abraham, God called Abraham his friend because Abraham believed that what he said he was able to perform. But 
faith went into action here too with this blind man. He stood up, jumping, leaping, praising God. We have that faith in our us. There's some people that their faith has not reached that level, but Peter had that faith. And so are we going out doing this? Preaching the gospel. Laying hands on the sick. And expecting them to recover. All this beggar was expecting to receive There's a, a couple mics here. Right? This guy sat there all day long to receive a beggar's portion? No, we're children of the king. And all of his promises in Christ are yes and through him the amen. We need to believe this. Yeah. But there's a we're in the third chapter of Peter in the 16th verse. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and faith which comes through him. He has given him perfect health in your presence. Somebody here wants some of that perfect health? Believe in that name. Isn't that what he says in Hebrews? The author, author and perfecter of our faith? We need to start saying what he says. You know what uh, Brother Friend says? Speak and receive God's supply. That's pretty simple. That's what it, Psalms 119, 130 says. The unfolding of the Word brings life. It gives understanding to the simple. See, this is not complicated. The opening of the Word will bring light. I don't care if it's your family relations, your bank account. That knee that's creaking. Whatever it is. God has got a solution for us, people. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> they don't like it that they'll belittle us for that, for, for our faith. And they said, no, I mean, this is. And they'll try to put something on me that doesn't belong to you. But I, I love it in the 13th verse of the 4th chapter. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were illiterate and uneducated men, they marveled And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. <coughs> Do people see that? In you? Do they see you walking in that faith? Talking that faith? <coughs> acting that? Not just talking. You got to walk the walk, and you got to talk the talk. And that's the way we receive in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And I think 
Thank you. I hope I'm right. I think it's the 14th chapter of Matthew. And the disciples and Jesus, they crossed over from the other side and came to the land of the Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, recognized him, I'm going to say that again. Recognized him. Now I believe every one of you here is saved and you recognize Jesus as your Savior. But is He your Lord? Do you recognize Him as your healer? He paid off for all of that. If you make Him your Lord and Savior, He is your healer. Say, I believe He's my healer. I recognize Him as my healer. These men recognized Him as a healer. And they brought, and they sent word to all the surrounding country and brought to Him all who were sick and begged Him that they might only touch the hem of His garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. That same power is living in us. It will operate. He didn't. Didn't he say we start out there and he said, us, Let us make man in our image. Let them have dominion. We've been given the name. We've been given the power. We've been given the blood. We've been given the authority. just need to believe that whatever we speak will come to pass. And if you come for prayer or to have hands laid on you, you need to be believed. It takes faith. Now, when we're babies, that beggar was a baby. So all this happened on Peter's faith in that name. And we need to do this. But it's time for us that have been around for a while to grow up. He told the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole. Amen? Amen. Yeah, it's, it's our faith. But too, that's faith Forgiveness and healing. I talked on that the last time. And that is Jesus. Okay, he's look, they're looking down. All, he's looking at our hearts. Is there faith in our hearts? This is faith food. We've got to feed ourselves on this. Not on dancing with the stars and stuff. We've got to. And baseball games. I won't say football. I could get in trouble for that. <laughs> but we need to give. We can't help give God. If we give to Him, He'll pour out on us exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think. 
And he said and begged him that they may only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. That's when we pray over these prayer clause. That law of contract and transmission, there's laws, spiritual laws that work in the kingdom of God. We need to dig into this word, people. And we need to increase more and more. And we need to raise the people up. And we can do that. As believers, we've been given a platform. To preach. To teach. And to heal. It's in every one of you. If you'll take that step of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Now if anybody 